Long ago, we didn't know if black holes would be common in the centers of galaxies. With the help of the Hubble telescope, which has good precise, we will extrapolate and assert that a black hole is a natural phenomenon in the center. On April 10th, 2019, the European Commission and the Event Horizon Telescope unveiled the first ever image of a supermassive black hole located at the heart of the distant galaxy M87, approximately 53 million light years away. This groundbreaking image confirmed the existence of black holes, which were previously only theoretical concepts. It also provided valuable information for scientists to more accurately measure the mass of the black hole, supporting Einstein's theory of relativity that black holes have a round shape. In the past, there was uncertainty about whether black holes were common in the centers of galaxies. However, with the help of the Hubble telescope, Every galaxy studied so far has been found to have a black hole. This suggests that black holes are a natural phenomenon in the centers of all galaxies. Black holes are cosmic events born from massive explosions, with their mass concentrated in an extremely small space, leading to immense gravitational forces from which nothing, not even light, can escape. Once something enters a black hole, it remains trapped forever. There are different sizes of black holes ranging from stellar black holes, which are a few times the mass of our sun, to supermassive black holes, which can be millions or billions of times the mass of the sun. Scientists have been studying black holes and their indirect effects for many years, gradually unraveling their intricacies. While they may seem to have always existed due to their massive mass and power, they actually have origins. Black holes are formed from the remnants of massive stars that have exhausted their nuclear fuel. These stars experience a supernova explosion, where their outer layers are violently expelled, while the core undergoes a gravitational collapse. If the core's mass is several times that of our Sun, the force of gravity overwhelms other forces and causes the core to implode. This implosion compresses the mass into an incredibly small volume similar to squeezing a ball and making it denser without changing its mass. This collapse forms a black hole. It should be noted that black holes do not know that they are black holes. They are simply massive objects in space. If the Earth were to turn into a black hole today, it would be a mini black hole about the size of a plum. As for the question of whether there is a point where matter can no longer be compressed during the formation of a black hole, Current understanding suggests that matter continues to collapse into a singularity at the center of the black hole, where it is thought to have infinite density. However, our understanding of the behavior of matter under such extreme conditions is still an active area of research. There is a limit to how much matter can be compressed, which is determined by the different states of matter. When matter is under high pressure, such as in white dwarfs or neutron stars, the electrons are squeezed together but they maintain their own identity within the structure. Neutron stars, for example, are incredibly dense objects, weighing about a mountain per teaspoonful. They are made up of densely packed neutrons and can have magnetic fields that pulse, which we call pulsars. If matter is compressed even further, it leads to the formation of black holes. The most common type of black hole is the stellar black hole which forms when a massive star collapses under its own gravity after exhausting its nuclear fuel. These black holes are incredibly dense, with a mass several times that of the Sun, at a size of just a few kilometers across. There are also intermediate mass black holes, which have masses in the thousands to tens of thousands times that of the Sun. Their formation is still uncertain, but it is believed that they could result from the merging of several stellar black holes or the collapse of massive gas clouds in the early universe. At the largest end of the scale, we have supermassive black holes. These are the biggest players, with masses millions to billions of times that of the Sun. They are found in the centers of most galaxies, including our Milky Way. Locating these supermassive black holes can be challenging, but their existence has been indirectly observed through the behavior of stars and gas near their suspected locations. Black holes can grow from smaller black holes by continuously absorbing matter from their surroundings. There are two main types of charged black holes, Riesner-Nordstrom and Kerr-Newman. 
Reissner Nordstrom black holes have an electric charge but do not spin, while Kerr Newman black holes have both charge and spin. The mix of charge and rotation leads to unique phenomena, such as frame dragging, where the spinning black hole twists the surrounding spacetime. Black holes have an event horizon, and inside the black hole is the Cauchy horizon, marking the singularity at the center. Crossing the event horizon leads to theories of entering an entirely new space-time dimension, but this remains untestable. Dark matter, a unique form of matter that does not interact with light, plays a significant role in the formation of black holes. It acts as a scaffold for the formation of galaxies and potentially contributes to the formation of black holes. Dark matter itself could be composed of primordial black holes or could be influenced by black holes, making them a possible source or storage for dark matter particles. The influence of dark matter can be observed through the gravitational effects on the motion of stars. While dark matter is not directly thought to form black holes, the existence of spinning and charged black holes offers insights into the nature of dark matter and its impact on the universe. The interplay between the forces of the cosmos and the quantum world adds to the intriguing nature of black holes. In the world of the incredibly small black holes present a puzzling phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. According to Stephen Hawking's theory, particles of matter and antimatter can appear near the black hole's event horizon. Typically, they would annihilate each other, but if one falls into the black hole, the other can escape, creating Hawking radiation. This radiation suggests that black holes are not completely inescapable, and they slowly lose mass over time. Hawking radiation also challenges the belief that nothing can escape a black hole. Physicists now agree that energy and information can leak out through this radiation. This helps address the long-standing question of whether information can be destroyed in a black hole. Hawking radiation may also preserve quantum information. While the process is not fully understood, it is suggested that details of what falls into the black hole could be reconstructed from the accumulated Hawking radiation. To study black holes in detail, scientists utilize tools like the Very Large Telescope, VLT, and the Event Horizon Telescope. The VLT, located in Chai, consists of four telescopes equipped with advanced instruments that provide high-resolution images of black holes. The Event Horizon Telescope, a network of synchronized radio telescopes placed around the world, creates a virtual Earth-sized telescope. In 2019, this collaboration captured the first direct image of a black hole's event horizon. The European Commission and the Event Horizon Telescope confirmed the existence of black holes, supporting Einstein's theories. The gravity instrument at the VRT and the upcoming ELT will aid in studying black holes. Despite advancements, much remains unknown about their inner workings. Some experts, like Neil deGrasse Tyson, explore intriguing concepts like wormholes and the possibility of black holes as gateways to other universes. Time dilation near black holes suggests the potential for time travel to the future. However, the existence of closed time-like curves and time loops is still a topic of debate with significant implications for our understanding of time and reality.